This is an excerpt from a recent Power Up webinar presenting a workflow to move audio files from Apple Final Cut Pro 10 to Adobe Audition. Hi, my name is Larry Jordan. In this excerpt, I'll show you how and why to create an audio bus in Adobe Audition. Notice all these dialog clips. I could apply a filter to each track. For instance, I want to do EQ shaping and, and boost the bass because this is, uh, or boost the treble or change the, the frequency to make a voice sound tinny or whatever I need. I would then have to do that for every track, which is a pain. The other thing is this audio is really low. I mean, look at the size of the waveforms. This is quiet audio. I need to boost it. I want to have my final mix be bouncing the meters between negative three and negative six. These are bouncing the meters. Well, let's just take a look. Let's solo these two tracks and play this. What you doing down here, hon? This would be considered low, negative 15, negative 12. That's too soft. I want to be able to hear more. Well, rather than put a filter on each track, which adds a lot of processing power and makes it really, really hard to make quick changes, especially if I've got 10 or 15 dialogue tracks, I build what's called a bus. A bus allows me to collect similar tracks, male dialogue, female dialogue, sound effects, group them all into a single output and apply filters just to that bus, to that output. And for dialogue, it can be a lifesaver. A bus simply collects audio from multiple tracks, puts it all in one spot. So you can apply filters and levels to multiple tracks at the same time. Like a bus takes people from multiple stops and delivers them all to a common destination. A audio bus takes audio from different tracks, allows you to process them as a group, and sends them on to the master. Let's just say, hypothetically, that this was a guy talking and this is a girl talking. It isn't, but let's pretend. I would want to have one set of EQ for a guy's voice because the frequencies are lower and a second set of EQ for a girl's voice because the frequencies are higher. So I would have one bus for all of my male dialogue and I have another bus for female dialogue. This allows me to then process all the guy's voices similarly and all the girl's voices similarly. Well, because both of these are women, and because I just, once I show you how to create one bus, you can create as many as you want. I'm going to go up to where it says multi-track, go to track. I'm going to add, I'm doing stereo output, so I'll do a stereo bus. Notice the bus is a yellow color. I'm going to drag it up, so I put it up here. I'm going to drag it up, so I put it up there. Good, thank you. And now I've got a bus. Well, buses here are kind of hard to work with. I want to show you something different which is, notice this allows me to see the timeline. This allows me to see the mixer. If you've never seen an audio mixer before, you look at this, you say, my life is too short, I'm not smart enough, how the heck am I gonna make sense of all of this? And you're right, first time I saw an audio mixer, I was completely intimidated. But what's really cool is, a mixer is composed of channel strips. And every channel strip is identical to the one next to it. Once you know how one channel strip works, you know how they all work because they're simply iterations of exactly the same thing. It's a small little interface that is exactly the same for each track. Up here it tells you where the audio came from and where it goes. This allows you to add effects. This allows you to play all kinds of interesting games with it that you can safely ignore because nobody's going to care. And this allows you to set pan. Notice it's left. Notice it's right. This allows you to set levels. Now you can do more with this as you learn more. But really, the key thing is, do you want to send it to a bus? I do. Do you want to add any effects? I do on the bus. I don't on the track. And do you want to change the level? So there's really only three things. This pop-up menu and this effects menu and this level slider, and you know how a level slider works. Oh, cool. Watch this. Double click it, goes back to zero. Ha, ah, love that part. Okay, so notice I've got my bus. So I'm going to change the name of the bus, call it Dialogue Bus. I'm going to call it that, but goodness knows what I type. I want to take, this is the input. I don't care about that. Leave the input alone. But this is what happens with the track. Where do I want the track audio to go? Do I want it to go to the master output? 
This is a dialogue track. No, I want it to go to the dialogue bus. So the audio is going to come from the timeline and go to the dialogue bus. And this dialogue is going to go to the dialogue bus. And this dialogue is going to go to the dialogue bus. And this dialogue is going to go to the dialogue bus. This shows where the audio came from. You can ignore that. This shows where the audio is going to go. Now, if I had a, a bus for sound effects, track four is sound effects one, and track five is sound effects two, maybe I would put a bus together for sound effects. And so this would then go to the sound effects bus. And if you don't have a bus for it, it goes to the master output, which is always all the way over here. This has been an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar looking at how to move audio files from Final Cut to Adobe and back. For the complete version of this online training, please visit our store at LarryJordan.com store and look for Webinar 262. By the way, when you need to stretch your training dollars, membership in our video training library saves you money and time. You can access all our videos for a low monthly price of only $19.99. That's more than 1,900 movies, hundreds of hours on a wide variety of subjects. Plus, premium members can download practice media and projects. Our training covers Apple and Adobe software. We update it multiple times each month. And for more information, visit LarryJordan.com membership. And thanks.